I have not made a mistake with this video in the time that it's been released. Uh, it's not late. I just wanted to sit back and kind of absorb instead of making something quite reactionary. Um, that game against PSG was a decent performance, to be honest. Uh, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot and we kind of beat ourselves. Uh, of course, there's a lot of debate around Fred, whether Oli should have subbed him off. In hindsight, yes, he should have, but I understand why he didn't. And at the same time, someone like Ward Prowse, who was on yellow uh, 16 minutes after... Um, 16 minutes into our game against Southampton, he wasn't brought off at half time and he made uh, a lot of dodgy tackles before he was eventually subbed off. Uh, I reckon Oli probably would have taken Fred off, you know, another 5 10 minutes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he was lucky to stay on the pitch. Uh, it's an attempted head, but I think the reason the referee doesn't give the straight red is because there doesn't look to be much contact. Um, you know, he's went to headbutt him, but uh, the, the players kind of made a complete meal of it, parade is. And uh, he, he didn't actually get hit. So that's probably why the refs deemed it to be a yellow. Yes, probably wrong according to the letter of the law. Uh, so yeah, Fred was lucky to stay on then. He did make a couple of iffy tackles in the first half as well. Uh, but the tackle that he eventually got sent off for was not a foul. Uh, you know, and yeah, maybe you can say it's karma because he should have been off earlier. But uh, if you're judging each tackle on its own merit, then yeah, it's not a second yellow at all. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of unluckiness and that was directly after conceding a goal against the run of play uh, at that point. But yeah, we, we started the game off uh, and early on we, we concede. It's a bit of sloppiness really. Uh, the ball manages to find its way through to Neymar and he scores. Uh, you know, he takes the chance. It's definitely not the player that you want to give half a chance to. Uh, so yeah, we had a bit of a mountain to climb. Uh, PSG were all over us in the first 15-20 minutes. But then the game settled down for us and we managed to create some chances. And we did get a lot of luck with the first goal that we did score. Well, our, our only goal that we did score with Rashford. Uh, he takes a shot and it's deflected. Because it's on target, it still goes down as Rashford's goal, which is good because um, I think it was Dan Danilo Pereira that it hit off. Obviously won't want the goal himself. And now that means Rashford's joint top uh, Champions League scorer alongside Erling Haaland, I think, on six. Um... So yeah, uh, it was kind of an even half in terms of PSG had the better of it for the first half of the first half and in the second half of the first half, we had the better of it. So 1-1 one, one at half time, probably a fair reflection. And then early on in the second half, of course, Fred came back on. Um, but yeah, we, we should have scored at least two or three here. Uh, Martial, you know, he, he's on a really poor spell of form. Uh, probably his worst at the club since uh, Mourinho since was it the first year of Mourinho or the second year of Mourinho where he, he just couldn't really get a game and when he did he didn't really perform um but yeah that that was lack of backing from the manager whereas this the, Ollie's backed him uh he really has and yeah he's just going through a tough spell so we have to we have to realize that he is a quality player and strikers often go on barren spells and we just need to back him Yes, he potentially needs a couple of games dropped. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't back the player. Sometimes that's just what a player needs. Kick up the arse to say, look, it's not good enough. You've got competition. You need to be doing better if you want to be starting week in, week out. So, yeah, I, I feel like resting, well, not resting, but dropping Martial for the next couple of games would be brilliant. And it may inf improve his form because, yeah, he missed a sitter. Uh, it's brilliant back heel from Cavani. Uh, brilliant play down the, the right hand side from Rashford a pinpoint accurate pass and Martial just blasted over the bar it's unacceptable when it's 1-1 in the Champions League he should have scored there was other chances of, uh, as well uh, I can't remember if it was the first half or the start of the second half Bruno Fernandes was played through brilliant ball from Lindelof I think it was and uh, I, I was so shocked he went for the pass to Cavani this was perfectly teed up and if there's one player for Manchester United that you want to be running through on goal it's Bruno Fernandes at the minute and yeah he didn't shoot he opted to pass and it was the wrong decision which is rare for for Bruno in that kind of scenario so yeah he he, he messed that one up um Martial had another chance as well uh I can't remember who had the initial shot it might have been Bruno Fernandes um but yeah the 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 shot uh, came back to Martial 
and yeah i mean this one's a harder chance you can't really berate him for this one too much it's well defended but maybe he could have placed it a little bit better but uh the, the first one definitely he has to be burying that and then we got another large slice of unluckiness really with uh, edison cavani the ball's played through and it's a lovely chip it really is I, I thought maybe you know he didn't need to chip it but the chip was so well executed and it's just unlucky it just hits the bar slightly the underside of the bar but it, it doesn't go in uh that would have been a dream for cavani there you know two one uh at that stage if that had went in so yeah we could have had two we could have had three um and we just didn't it, it's fine margins in games like this when you're playing a quality up uh, opponent you have to take your chances and we dominated for large spells in that game we definitely held our own and of course the last season's finalists uh but yeah unfortunately we we just we we capitulated a bit when the next one went in um who was the next one oh god who who actually scored it because neymar scored the third one who scored the second one for them was it a header no it wasn't it was marquinhos wasn't it It was from a corner and it drops down to marquinhos uh he's literally a fraction onside fair play he's not offside he's onside um but yeah i mean he manages to get it round to here well underneath De Gea, De Gea made some good saves in this game as well, I uh, didn't really think he put a glove wrong, to be honest not uh, not many players did, like Fred had a moment of madness but again he deserves to be backed I feel, because other than his first season I feel like Fred's been very consistent for us and yeah it was stupid to go in for the headbutt but other than that he had a good game, uh, you know the, the tackle that he got sent off for as I say wasn't a yellow uh, so he was a little bit unlucky in that regard. He did make a foul in the second half, uh, which you know kind of backs Oli's decision to keep him on. But I know there's a lot of people criticising him for that. And yes, maybe he should have. You know, we had options off the bench. We had Van der Beek, we had Matic, we had Pogba. So you know, Oli made a mistake. Uh, Fred made a mistake. But yeah, he definitely deserves to be backed. And anyone turning on him was a bit silly. Martial, I can understand a little bit more why people. Or turning on him i still wouldn't say that I, I still feel like he needs backed he was brilliant last season he was our top scorer wasn't he um so yeah he's just going through a rough patch he just needs backing um but yeah fred got sent off straight after that uh we we brought on pogba um and van der beek i think for rashford got a, a shoulder injury and marcia was subbed off then edison cavani came off uh, i think eventually we had a Gallo on i forgot we had a Gallo to be honest um, and I'm sure we subbed on someone else uh, from the from the top of my head. Oh, it was McTominay, wasn't it? McTominay came on. No, McTominay started the game. Was it Matic who came on? No. I'm at a loss. Someone else came on. But anyhow, um, Pogba had a really, really good volley attempt that was just over the bar. Um, you know, he, he's going to be in or around the squad as well. It's nice to have a bit of depth. And, uh, you know, hopefully with, a, with an extended break because of his injury... He can get back to the top top player that we all know Pogba can be and shows it sometimes so yeah that would be brilliant uh, but yeah he was unlucky not to score there uh, we had a couple of other chances as well even down to 10 men but uh, unfortunately right at the end of the game we get a corner uh, I think it's a, our corner and it's it's well defended from PSG and it's a counter-attack of course by this point we had Harry Maguire up front we had practically everyone up front other than I think Juan Basaka um, and yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a counter-attack. It happens. We've scored many goals like this in the past. But yeah, when, when the other team's piling forward, trying to get back in it, easy chance. And Neymar manages to uh, to put that one away. Mbappe had a chance just before that as well. I feel like Mbappe's decision-making in this game wasn't great for us, which was fantastic. Still, ov obviously, like a generational talent. Like There's no dispute in how good Mbappe is. He scored something like 100 and 76 goals already or 150 goals in his career already and he's only 21 like it's absolutely absurd yes it's in league one but yeah he, he'll move to a different club at some point and yeah i mean it's just crazy but yeah in this game he, he wasn't uh that good uh, to be fair other than Neymar's two goals as well i think he was relatively quiet um in the midfield uh you know not in the midfield sorry when he had the ball it was kind of in the midfield and yeah he took on a few players etc but you know it, it wasn't uh, a vintage performance from Neymar by any stretch but again that shows a world-class player he wasn't at the top of his game but he still scored two goals so you know there's no hate I'm not hating on them uh but yeah PSG 
are a very annoying side to play at times. Uh, they they do like to you know drop to the floor quite easily. Uh, you know everyone knows that they're, they're the kind of team that tries to buy fouls all the time, um, which is fair enough. It's what they do. Um, but it would be so good if Istanbul could beat PSG on the final day and we draw with Leipzig because that would mean PSG going to Europa. But of course, that's not going to happen. Uh, it, it's it's still in our hands. We are top of the group, of course. Um, but we've got a tough game away to Leipzig, um, who are also in a position like us. Like They need a result in this game. Uh, they, they need to beat us realistically unless PSG drop points to Istanbul then a draw would be enough for them to qualify as I say um, wait no a draw would only be enough for Leipzig if PSG lose if not Leipzig have to win and as for us we just need a draw but uh, yeah we, we we've got the the quality in the squad to win it, again fine margins another day we'd have beat PSG there like you know it, it's just one of those where if you don't take your chances and the other team takes theirs then they're going to win but we, we held our own it was kind of a 50-50 game until 10 men but I mean that's that's most of the time anyway so yeah against Leipzig we just need to cut out the silliness uh, the stupidity and take our chances if we can do that then we'll qualify and please let us qualify. I do not want to be going into the Europa League. The Europa League this year could have some ridiculous teams in it. Of course, you've already got the three Premier League clubs, Arsenal, Spurs, Leicester. Uh, Inter Milan are practically confirmed to be joining it. Atletico Madrid could be uh, either Leipzig, us, of course, uh, potentially PSG, but not likely. Uh, I think even Liverpool could get in there mathematically, but I mean, they're not going to. It'll be Ajax in that group that dropped down. So yeah, there's a lot of big teams in there, um, so it, it's it's going to be tough. But regardless, Europa League just isn't isn't Champions League. We have to be going through, and then of course when we play that game four days later, we've got a uh, Manchester derby, and the next game we've got, uh, which is tomorrow by the time this video is uploaded, I think we play on Saturday this week. I'd imagine so, because then I would think we play on Tuesday against Leipzig but I will double check but yeah West Ham were unbeaten last month uh, in the three Premier League games that they played so Moyes is on a real high at the minute for West Ham and I'm sure he'd love nothing more than to get one over on United so we are going to have to manage this well we've got really important games every game is is huge at the minute uh, but particularly the next three because we, we want to be Keeping up with the, the top of the Premier League, uh, putting the pressure on really. Because um, who knows, the league is so so close at the minute, every point counts. So yeah, get a win against West Ham, get a win against Leipzig and then get a win against City. Easy enough, isn't it? <laughs> Ollie's got some tough decisions to make, he really does. We've got a good squad, but yeah, he's going to have to be on the top of his man management game. Which, despite what some fans say, I think that's one of his strong points, uh, managing the squad, uh, you know, keeping players happy when they're not playing and making them hungry for when they do play. Uh, it's just individual errors that tend to cost us at the minute. But uh, hey ho, what do I know? Ollie, the PE teacher, of course, is the uh, the narrative. So anyhow, uh, on to West Ham and hopefully we can get three points. But yeah, it's going to be a big, big Tuesday, isn't it? Oh, come on, United. We can fucking do this. Let's get into the last 16.